progesterone is a natural hormone and is made by the ovary and is, is very, very important to support a pregnancy. Actually, the, it's, the name progesterone is progesterone, progestation. It's necessary for a gestation, for a pregnancy to uh, succeed. The ovary, before ovulation, makes estrogen, which is the female hormone. After ovulation, after the egg is released, it starts making progesterone. And the role of progesterone is to prepare the uterine lining, so the embryo can implant, and to sustain the pregnancy until the placenta takes over, which usually happens uh, near the end of the first trimester, after uh, around 10 weeks of gestation. Now, progesterone supplementation is important part of a lot of the fertility treatments. Uh, for example, with IVF, uh, after the eggs are harvested, we aspirate the eggs, we aspirate also some of the cells that make progesterone. So one of the concerns for many years is that the um, ovaries may not be making enough progesterone to sustain the pregnancy and to prepare the uterine lining for implantation. So it's been always a, a part of the IVF protocol to supplement with some extra progesterone after the eggs are harvested. With the, some of the other treatments uh, that we use, sometimes we need the progesterone uh, because it's part of an artificial cycle. For example, women who are using donor eggs, they did not produce the egg, so they don't make their own progesterone. And we have to actually um, supplement that progesterone as part of this artificial cycle. Similarly, sometimes with frozen embryo transfers, where the embryos have been frozen before and the patient has not produced the egg that month, we have to supplement the progesterone. Progesterone can be administered in, in different ways. It can be taken orally as pills, it can be taken as an injection, and it's an intramuscular injection, or can be used vaginally. Uh, for fertility treatments, usually we don't use the oral progesterone because we need to have higher levels it doesn't get absorbed as well through the stomach. So the difference between the vaginal and the injection, the main difference is the blood levels that are achieved with the injections are higher than the levels that are achieved with the vaginal progesterone. The idea is that the vaginal progesterone works mainly uh, on the uterus directly uh, through the vagina and it doesn't get so much into the blood. So for some patients where we want the blood levels to be higher for different reasons, we would probably prefer the injections. For patients where we don't uh, necessarily worry about their blood levels, uh, we can uh, easily use the vaginal. And for a lot of the, our patients, they really have the choice of using one or the other with very, very similar results. Uh, another difference, of course, is uh, the injections uh, sometimes can be a little bit sore. Uh, another challenge is the patient may need to have a partner or some other person giving them the injection. It's not easy to give yourself an intramuscular injection. I actually tried to do that one time and I, I did it, but it wasn't that easy. So it's easier to have somebody who can help you with that. Uh, the vaginal uh, gel, for example, uh, some patients find it a little bit uncomfortable after a few days, so um, the, the advantage is not needing the nails and taking the injection, but uh, it can cause some vaginal discomfort. There is also another um, vaginal tablet that can be used instead of the gel. The tablets need to be used two or three times a day, uh, but they dissolve a little bit better, it's just that you need to apply it more often. Progesterone is used in an IVF cycle, usually after the eggs are harvested, uh, starting the next day. One of the concerns after we do the egg retrieval or the harvesting of the eggs is that when we aspirate the eggs, we are also removing some of the cells that are making progesterone. So the production of progesterone by the ovaries may not be as robust as it needs to be, so we like to supplement um, as part of the IVF protocol. Uh, another reason to supplement the progesterone is that the hormone levels during an IVF cycle are usually very high, much higher than a natural cycle, so we want to balance that with some supplemental progesterone. 
Projection can also be used to create an artificial cycle for other part of the IVF treatment. For example, patients that are using donor egg, they don't produce their own eggs, they did not ovulate, so they don't make any estrogen or any progesterone on their own. So we have to provide that as part of an artificial cycle and it's part of the protocol. Similarly, some of the frozen embryo transfers, if they are done during a medicated cycle when the patient did not produce her own egg, we supplement with estrogen and progesterone to create the uterine environment and prepare the uterine lining for implantation.